Hi, this is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's the Krypton Report! <laughs> I'm your host, Tyler, and welcome to Krypton Report, a podcast dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl. We're going to look at the Supergirl TV series, as well as the Krypton TV series, anything that has to do with the characters in their world. Comics, movies, TV shows, we will talk about everything and anything. We are part of the Southgate Media Group Podcasting Network. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review to help us get better. You can find me personal at JTY Patrick on Twitter and everything else. What up? Hey, Phil. Hey, Tyler. What is this? So, <laughs> this, this is me and Phil deciding that we're going to do Krypton Report together. And I kind of you know what? When I asked you to do this, I didn't really think about the episode until I rewatched it. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, you know what? Like, it is a good episode for you and I to do together because the story of this episode is the parallel of two fathers and their relationship with their children. Mm-hmm. So, hey, it works best. Storytelling-wise, it was a good episode, but, like, if you're looking for, like, action, there really wasn't much in that regard. No, there... Yeah, like there was not, and it wasn't even really action. much. There really even really wasn't much Supergirl because I mean most of the episode revolved and, around Maggie. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, and John. And I'm. I think. I think to carry the series and to keep you interested in the series, you need to let your secondary characters grow. Mm-hmm. You need to want to come and watch, or you get to the point where all you want is Supergirl, and you don't care about any of the other characters. And then your show's destined to fail. But it is a weird choice that, like, Maggie was, like, half the focus of this episode, seeing as how she's not even, like, what, a regular of this season now, so she's not going to be in a bunch of episodes. And it makes me wonder if that's part of building up to why she's not going to be a regular. I'm thinking, yeah. Uh, But first thing I wanted to say, like, I didn't notice this last week. Hmm. Um, I really like the new intro. Was that like she? Was that there last week? I couldn't tell if that was. I like don't new know. This, that's what I'm this, saying. This week, I was like, wait. That, that. That's why I'm wondering because I don't remember it, but it stuck out so much on this episode. Yeah. That I'm wondering if this was the first one with it. I'm thinking because that's this is the first time I noticed it. I really like the music change, her voice, mm-hmm. the images they used. Um, you know, because they inserted, I guess, the new actress that's going to be young Kara. Mm-hmm. Um. They inserted uh, my favorite Lois Lane, Erica Durant, as her mom. And they, of course, they use better shots of Tyler Hecklin as Superman when she talks about her cousin. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, I like that. And you know what? I wish we would get an episode like this again, focusing on when. I feel like Wynn and Jimmy are really getting pushed in the back. Oh, yeah. They weren't even on this week. Especially. Really? Wynn got, I mean, they got like what? Small Couple segments lines, in yeah. the party. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, this is our third episode. Yeah. I had it. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Still no Guardian. Mm-hmm. You think that's over with or put on the back burner for a while? I feel like maybe it's on the back burner because it didn't quite. Maybe he didn't do what they wanted it to do. Um, I think he needed a better costume. And that's something I had predicted slash hoped would occur this season. Mm-hmm. He's alive. Mm-hmm. My dinosaur loving Spider-Man child. Well, maybe that's um, maybe that's part of the reason that we haven't seen Guardian this season yet is because maybe they want you to kind of forget that co- first costume. <laughs> You know, maybe um, I just I just want them to do something with the Jimmy Olsen character or James. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to use James as the distinction between the more mature, grown up version of the character that he wants to portray mm-hmm. compared to using Jimmy 
as, you know, Clark's young friend, pal, you know, the, the young green reporter, um, photo photojournalist that he was. So I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm just kind of like, man, like he's a character that's a good character, but it's like at the end of season one, they were, they didn't know what to do with him. Well, yeah. For next af- season. After, after they wrote it. So he wasn't going to be Kara's love interest. It's like, well, what did we do with him? And I don't know, like I miss, I don't know. I, I miss a lot of that early dynamic that he had and kind of like being the shepherd to her, like, you know, uh, Clark went through this and Clark showed me and told me how he overcame this. I love you. Uh, I know. Oh, Hey, it's my wife. Um, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> mm hmm. Well, it's not you, so. Um, <laughs> what do I have the same ringtone? I, I, you know what? I don't know. Like I, where I got my new phone. Side note: like I lost all the ringtones that I had made from the phone, and because mm-hmm. iTunes no longer has a spot to put ringtones in it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that pissed me off. But moving on. Um, so so what you're saying about Jimmy is like, you know, he just kind of a character that outgrew their, mm-hmm. and I don't want to f- them to force Jimmy or force his dialogue or whatever. Like I want it to come natural. I don't want him to come like people probably hate me for this. I love supernatural. And I think Cass is a great character, but I think he overstayed his welcome way too long to the point where mm-hmm. it just does like he, him being there just is, um, I don't know. It's just not as good as it once was. So, well, it's, it's kind of I, I, it's, it's kind of like the same problem Arrow has right now. Like you have so many cast members, it's like, what do you do with everybody? And you think it's like, I kind of felt like since we're just talking in general at the moment, I kind of felt like they should have maybe I don't know, shifted some characters. For instance, Kid Flash maybe could have popped up here soon on Legends. Hmm. And been over there with them, kind of freshen that up, that scene. Um, because he's really not doing much anything right why, now. Why would you wish that on him? <laughs> because maybe he could provide some energy that they desperately need. Maybe. I mean um, put put Kid Flash in there. If Monel comes back, maybe put him over there. I don't know. Guardian. Yeah. <laughs> uh I think Arrow did not kill enough people on that island they didn't had, kill anyone except for his baby was, mama I mean they killed her okay which is horrible mm-hmm. they killed the Al Ghouls so they could finally put that story to bed like Oliver did um, but like we should have I mean we this season should not have Felicity but that's a different show but I really like now Phil I know you're going to say yes but I must ask anything. Did you know who John Jones's father was when he appeared? Um, you mean the actor? Let's just say more of the actor's voice. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That I liked a lot. And if you don't know what we're talking about, the actor who's playing John Jones's father voice Martian Manor Manhunter on the 2003 Justice League series um, and Justice League Unlimited. So to me, that is just awesome because it's kind of like passing of the torch. Uh, now, if they can get, oh man, my name just, the name froze me. The actor that played Martian Manhunter on Smallville to appear at some point as well, that would be awesome. Um, because it's just a character that hasn't got enough love Mm-hmm. And finally, is it seems like these CW shows have good luck getting uh, legacy characters. Well, except for Tom Welling. Sorry, poor Tom. Come on, buddy. Let me let me just text you right now. Hey, Tom. Come on, bro. He's busy on this um, Yeah, I mean, I, I understand where he's coming from, it, but you could at least make a cameo. Like, I understand not want to play Clark again or getting that, but you could at least make a cameo. I mean, it's one thing not to want to be on the show, maybe, but I mean, he's on the, he's on at the exact night and time as Supergirl, but he's on the other show. 
Which is hilarious. Now, if he appeared on Gotham, that would be kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Now, if he appeared on Gotham as Clark Kent from Smallville, that'd be hilariously awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. But so this episode, yes, it was very Maggie and centric, which, like I said, is fine because you want to build those characters because we want to care about those characters. And if she's not going to be a regular, are they going to, I don't want to say they're not kill her off, but like maybe she goes in a coma maybe or something. lost to the phantom zone. I, you know, this is, this is the sci-fi superhero show. So we can kind of get away with a lot. Um, so they want to maybe build her up so that we care about her more when that occurs. And this was, I thought it was, it was, I mean, it was a very strong, well acted episode. And as a father, like I said, I was sitting there playing with Solomon and Salo while I was watching it. And I don't know, it puts a lot of thoughts in your head. And like, you know, putting yourself in the position of each dad, like when the fa- when Maddie's father explained to her where he c- comes from, I get it. But at the same time, yeah, I would want to be by my child's side to help them fight. And shouldn't you because be? I, and I would, and I would try to take as much of the, I don't want to say burden, but as much of the hatred that's going to come their way, I would like to take it, absorb it, and shield them from it. Yes, and should instead of casting them out. And shouldn't you be happy that your children didn't have to struggle like you did? But and you, you should be, you know. But the thing is, she did struggle. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, when you when you abandon your kid at what fourteen, yeah, your kid is gonna struggle, and you know, and she was left with a whole set of new issues by her father abandoning her, and basically telling her that he is ashamed of her. Uh-huh. And you know, I, I I can understand where certain people from a generation could come from with that, uh-huh. but at the same time, I think my love for my children is stronger than whatever it is that they choose or past they choose to go on. Mm-hmm. And I want to be there for my child. I mean, yeah, I mean, you should, as a parent, you should want your children to be, as long as no one, they're not hurting anybody, you should, as long as, you know, you should want your kids to be happy no matter what form that takes. I mean, I don't want to open a whole can of worms of things, but just whatever decisions my children decide to walk down, I want to, even if it's right or wrong, um, I want to be there to support them and allowing them to um, do what they need to do or want to do. And, you know, so, I mean, I just, I couldn't, I just, I can't see just abandoning my child like that. Like, and yeah, just I mean, I mean, shunning like, them, like, mm-hmm. and pushing them away. Cause I mean, Tyler's, e- everyone listening, Tyler's even dealing with that now. I mean, his son's already making big decisions. Like, Solo is big in the Spider Man, a Marvel character. Tyler, Tyler understands. I'm, Tyler's I in know. his room. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he's. I even went on my way to find him a, a secondary Spider Man costume for Halloween. I mean, he's got a Spider Man costume and his backup Spider Man like, costume. He's like, son, I know you love a Marvel character, but I still love you. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Like, I support <laughs> the love of the Marvel and the Spider Man. It's cool. Um, I even. Even has some Spider Man gifts waiting for Christmas that I purchased because I found it and it was exciting to find. Got him a cool costume hoodie. Because hmm. um, every time I go to get him dressed, I'm like, put on this hoodie. He's like, Spider Man hoodie, Daddy. Hmm? Like, you don't have one. I've watched too much of The Office. I look to the side and wink, but... expecting the camera. Um, That's what she said. <laughs> but, so, but on the flip side, you know, we, we learn about what well, did they pronounce it? Marin, I think that's the Martian pronunciation. It was Marin and Myron or something like that's the Earth pronunciation. Something, yeah. They say it one time. Mm. Kara says it. Um, I just they explained it, but I thought it was weird that they said they have this custom where they take human form. I'm like, really? Well, I, I, he's they take the form of the people that they're in the surrounding with. Yeah. So the sense is. Because Jean was presenting himself in his Hank form, let's 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 just face it. Um, being on the planet, you think he would be in Martian form the whole time, and I know that they do his face CG for it, 
But let's make up some prosthetics, and you could shoot it away so that he could have some prosthetics on, mm-hmm. so that it, you don't have to. Like, why is he looking like Hank Henshaw on Mars? Why are the all these Martians on Mars Earthlings? But you know, he took that form, and I mean, it would be hard. Like, it's one thing to be like, "Oh, you're not my son. He was killed. How could you know that?" But when you live in a culture where they can read your mind and all this type stuff, it makes it even harder. And I kind of thought that maybe he would read Supergirl's mind, you know, because she's not a white Martian or whatever and doesn't have any kind of psychic ability mm-hmm. and be able to see that that's his son, you know. Um, but at first I was at first I was wondering if he had like hold on, help. hold on, hold on. Uh oh. So I believe Young Solo has gotten into something. Obi! Oh, the dog returned. Obi! The dog has returned. Tyler's Buddy. dog ran away Buddy. today. Now he's back. Phil, look! Tyler's dog has returned. I told you. Hold on, I'm telling Janina. This is live on YouTube. Uh-huh. Hold on, just give me a second. Sorry, people. I'm going to go make sure. Um, he's, I'm just going to give him some food real quick. Keep, keep talking. You're good. Okay. You got this, Phil. You're the man. I know. So, yes, the dog, the dog has returned. The day is saved. Um... But anyway, you know, hmm. Should I slip some plugs in here while Tyler's not listening? Um, been doing a lot of uh, interviews on the Capes and Lunatics. Uh, if you're any kind of creative, either comic books, TV, movies, if you're a singer, if you're a band, if uh, a comedian, whatever, if you're a creative person, come do an interview with us. Uh, get a hold of me, NightwingPDP at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at NightwingPDP. Uh, and if you want to get a hold of any of the Capes and Lunatics, uh, it's Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com. You, we just love comments on any of our shows. Uh, and our voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Uh, but hey, did anyone see Flash this week? Um, I like that they're doing different. All right. All right, I did. All I right, did, no, good listen. I did. My some dog pl- ran did, away chasing deer. I did. A, I did some plugs. So it was like a commercial break, and then I was about to say, "Hey, did anyone see Flash this week?" This podcast is sponsored by Phil. Blah 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 blah. This podcast now, is not program. sponsored by any big companies, but if they would like to, we will take your money. We'll plug the crap out of your stuff. I'll get a tattoo of it. Whatever. Um, I, I love Brand X. That can be you. Yeah. Oh no, he uses bread. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know, so seeing that the reaction shot that we'll call him My- Marin for right now, because that sounds cool, uh, had when he realized that Jean was his son was awesome. Mm. And I look forward to seeing where that goes now that he is back on Earth with Sean. And I have a feeling that he's going to die saving John. Maybe. Just, I don't know, call it a hunch. Um, the, 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 the flashback of John with his two daughters was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, you know, it, it just, it was a very powerful episode. I mean, John's father, we know Maggie's not going to be in the whole season. I mean, we've got some bodies. That, I mean, we could see some deaths. Maybe in the crossover. I mean, evil Nazis you know what? invade. You might get a body count. I would. That would be. Um, that would be. I just. I want to say. It would be good. To have. Uh, some events like that. Mm-hmm. Where. Something. You know. There are stakes. There's mm-hmm. no. 
like before we saw in the crossover where everyone died and Barry Rent was fast enough in the blast to go back in time and save everybody. Mm-hmm. And that didn't cause Flashpoint, first of all, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, we did learn that one of the fallouts real quick from Flashpoint is people still use MySpace. That was on the Flash this past week. So the thinker was talking about MySpace. So that has to be a Flashpoint fallout. If not, I don't know what's going on there. But uh, so, yeah. but no, I mean, I, I think mean, wait, think, think of the drama if if they actually do kill somebody off in this crossover. Think about this: if they are going to kill off Alec, uh, <coughs> Maggie, think about the drama between Kara and Alex if Maggie is killed by Kara's evil double. Oh yeah. And Alex just has now, this image in her think, head. Do you think that since they made Alex a lesbian character, that she's lost some of the characteristics of being the character she was in the first season? I don't like, think so. Because oh, I mean she really didn't she really didn't have she really didn't have any romantic background before. And but there's really there's season. certain things like traits in her characterization that I that I feel that they don't show anymore. I feel like they're still there. But now they focus on her relationship that more of the tough agent Alex that we saw, we don't see. I don't think it's I don't think it's necessarily because she's a lesbian. I think that they that they've introduced any romantic relationship for her. They kind of like, you know, before and she was like colder and more detached. And now they're actually showing like a softer side to her because I don't want the Like, I don't want the character like just because they change something. Like they like oh well we have to make her soft and her, no I'm like that was the 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 show is about strong women and no yeah. matter what choices or whatever they are you know I I want to see strong female characters I don't know if it's just her opening up more because she has this love in her life and that could be like I really want to sit down and watch season one and two like together and just kind of compare because we did have that huge shift um you know from networks. You know one thing I just thought about, Phil? Hmm. You know what we didn't get this year? What? A superhero showdown. Hmm. You know how like every year they've done like the battle royale type superhero showdown little short like hmm. advertisement movie thing? We didn't get one this year. They're too busy filming the crossover. Maybe. Because, you know, thinking about it, I'm just sitting here like how um you know like They've not really got to introduce the rest of the multiverse team to John Jones. You know, they, they saw Kara, the alien who looks fine, but they haven't got to meet the Martian. Well, yeah, he was in the he was in the musical episode, so like Team Flash kind of got it to meet him. But yeah, like- which is great because once again, that episode you had your secondary characters, Martian Manhunter Five and Kid Flash, on a mission together, which made that enjoyable, and you care about those characters. But yeah, I mean, Team Arrow and Legends, the Legends have to meet John, but uh, n- nobody's really met Alex. Yeah, or when? you know, Barry. Barry was the only one that met Alex. Uh huh. Um, when? So, uh, yeah, I'm just sitting there thinking like the crossover. I want to see some new dynamics there. Um, are you like I have to ask because I kind of we're just kind of wrapping up. I kind of made up my mind here. Like I haven't watched anything since the premiere episode of Legends. Are you still watching it? I watched um, the second week. I haven't watched this week's yet. Probably if not tonight, probably tomorrow. I'm gonna watch it. I just, I don't know, man. Like, I just, I just. Yeah, I know. I, I really, I, I feel have... like every choice that's presented, they make the wrong choice for the show. Mm-hmm. And I can't stand Rip Hunter. So I, I would be awesome if in the crossover, Rip Hunter gets murdered. Just saying. Well, they kind of, he's kind of still there, but he's kind of like not on the team. Am I asking for too much by asking for Rip Hunter to, you know, be destroyed? So, my bad, guys. My bad. Um, Doctor Who, Doctor Who fans. That's a, at JTY Patrick on Twitter. I mean, it has nothing against the actor. I just think they're yeah. writing the character horribly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the same. It's the same trope every season he falls into. Well, and I don't know if they're going to need him because uh, 
we've got the word Victor Garber's going to be out of there. Yeah, so uh, that's going to be interesting. Because Charlie and I were talking about this on Saturday. What do you think? Do you think Jax is going to be Firestorm by himself, which they've done in the comics? Or is he going to be It'll, like it would have to be some else, or it like would a, have to be something where there's like an experiment or something when they're fused together that basically traps Martin Stein and him together, and he just hears the voice. I don't know. I th- I think like, they're going to write him out com- completely. I'm per. I'm thinking. I kind of think they should. They're like well, like I was telling Charlie, like um, when Jason Rush was first became Firestorm, they had it where he could like bond with anyone. He could like pull one See, no, that's like, that matrix. That would have been interesting if that's what happened with Stein. Mm-hmm. Um, like back when they were looking for yeah. basically Jax. If they would have done something where he could bond if he would have been exposed to the dark matter. Um, but I don't know. I just feel like he's the only superhero on that show. Well, I mean, I guess you have Citizens and Steel, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's so depowered, like it's not even like Firestorm. Yeah, I guess it's, it's like budget or whatever. But yeah, it's like Johnny Stone. He'll go join Vixen on her animated show. But I mean, back to Supergirl. Like, this was a great episode. Not a lot happened for like action. It's mainly personal character pieces mm-hmm. of the characters doing dialogue. The characters exchanging. Oh. So- uh, what? Go ahead. You're not gonna. You're not gonna mention the most controversial part of the episode. Did I miss something? Cara and her Britney Spears impression. Oh my gosh! Was that so random? <laughs> like she pulled up, and I was like, at first, I I paused for a second because I because Solo was playing mm-hmm. on YouTube, and I thought, okay, maybe a video popped up, and that's. But then when I realized that's the song she had. I was like, really? I'm like, that's that's what you pick. But I just knew I just knew the minute I heard that song, I'm like, oh god, something's gonna happen when they say hit me, baby, one more time. I'm like, some John's gonna pop out or some or car Cara's gonna hit somebody, something's gonna happen. I I like, did John you like out. his uh spaceship transforms, like shape shifts? Oh, and, and the car. It reminded me of a space cabbie at the end. When it was all like But yeah, I was like, that's cool. That would have come in handy before. I don't know. Maybe when they were you know, like that awkward episode where Alex flies Karish pod up into space. Mm-hmm. You know, if John had his ship chilling around. I guess he, a little bit better. I guess he didn't tell anyone about it. He was like, oh, yeah, I got that thing. Nobody flies Lola. Have they ever said when John got to Earth? I don't like, think was it right before, you know, they went after him or had he been here for a while? I don't know if they've ever said. For this show's timeline, yeah, I don't, I don't know if they've ever really said. See, I don't think so either. Have they even said? Well, they he he came to Earth of his own choice, right? Well, he said he fled to Earth, but yeah, yeah, because it's not like in the comics where like a teleportation beam just like zaps him to Earth or something. And see, I kind of like that because I like the idea that he got pulled to Earth. I kind of like the idea that he was stuck on Mars as the last Creed Martian, and mm-hmm. like nobody else was existed on Mars anymore. Because that would have been, in- got- I think that would have been good if he would have been pulled. Like he would have been fighting the White Martians with the Resistance, and then he got pulled to Earth. And by the time he's able to get back, like the battle was over. Yeah, like you know, he got pulled to Earth, and you know something. I don't. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Maybe. Maybe we'll learn more as time goes by with the development, because especially with his father, and you know, his father's going to ask him why he's on Earth. Mm-hmm. Because I do think it's weird that like Mars is still a flourishing planet, and he's on Earth. Like even though it's all white Martians, mm-hmm. with now two green Martians left. Um. I, just, I don't know. I just kind of because I always thought, you know, that was one thing that John and Superman had in common was they were both the last of their planets. Mm-hmm. So but I think, I mean, like I said, this was a great episode. Uh, just a very character driven. We got to see him again again. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was interesting that when she was fighting along, John, she was in her green Martian appearance compared to her white Martian self. 
Well, if you were a shapeshifter, wouldn't you appear as you wanted? Wouldn't you look like the way you wanted to look? Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would look like this. <laughs> Unless I was trying to, like, rob a bank or something. Um, I would definitely look different. That's for sure. I still can't believe your dog's back. <laughs> yeah, I, well, it was so weird. Like, we were looking, like, and all of a sudden, I heard something at the door, and I looked back, and Solomon's like, he goes, he just looked at me, he goes, Obi? Mm-hmm. Like, he looks at the at the window and the door, and I open it, and there's Obi. And I can tell he's tired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, that's all I have. I, I mean, I, I watched it last night, and I watched it again today with the kids and just thought about you know, being a parent and what that looks like. And so I didn't take a whole lot of notes or dig anything around. But what do you, uh, well, just since it's you and I, like we talked about the first episode, what do you think real quick about the second episode? Um, I like, I like this season, but it just seems weird. Cause it's like, is rain, rain is supposed to be the big bad, right? I, I guess. Because I mean, it, it, she doesn't even seem that bad yet. I mean, she wasn't in this week's episode, but like, yeah, like a lot last. Well, the first week and then a lot last week, she just seems like a house, you know, a housewife who discovered she has superpowers. It's like it, it, it's just weird. It's like where are they going with this season? It doesn't even seem like there's a big bad yet. I just Cause like because like we really haven't even got much more Edge either. And I'm okay with that as yeah. long as they pull it together. But I just, I, you know, I keep making this comparison. I just don't really don't want Rain to end up being the way they did Davis Bloom and Smallville. Mm-hmm. I like the way they did Davis Bloom and Smallville. Don't get me wrong, but I don't want to see that copied, you know, yeah. here with her and just be like, oh, it's Rain. We don't, um, we don't side need news: other, We don't need another you, Kryptonian Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Did you see? Like, this is something I, I've seen people talk about. We'll do. Did you see that it's supposed to be with the Justice League movie that the character of Steppenwolf had done battle before Doomsday? Hmm. Mm-mm. It was it was in an article, and I was like, "That's cool." And then people are like, "How's that possible?" I didn't see that in the movie, and I'm like, "Did you not hear the the thing is about the ancient Kryptonian deformity?" <laughs> Meaning, like, there has been more Doomsdays until this one. Like it, it, and that's part of probably why the genetic council started breeding children, was because maybe the natural birth triggered or something could happen. To like if anything doomsdays. happens to that Kryptonian DNA, it turns into a doomsday. You know, and I thought I just thought that was kind of neat that you know Steppenwolf had battled one before, and hmm. I have a theory. I want to say this on here. Um, you know, Zack Snyder's been releasing like photos of behind the scenes of the Justice League stuff, and there's a really cool photo where you see. Uh, it looks like the King of Atlantis with Amazons. Hmm. It could be Poseidon. And the t- my two theories are that in the first battle with the apocalypse, you had the, the gods. You had Zeus. You had Poseidon. You had all the gods fighting along. And that's why Steppenwolf was defeated. Hmm. And that he couldn't invade until all of the gods were killed. That's why a- Wonder Woman killed Ares. Then she disappeared. And when Superman died, I don't know why he wouldn't think of Wonder Woman as being an adversary. But this, my thing was they couldn't invade until all the old gods were dead. So Ares, when he was dead, it opened it up. But my thought is, what if it's during that battle with Steppenwolf that Atlantis gets put in the sea? Maybe. The city, that's how the city of Atlantis comes to be underwater. Um, just throwing that out there. Just, maybe, you know, maybe that's why Paradise Island or Themyscira is behind. They, uh, maybe they're they erected a magic spell to keep it hidden from the rest of the world. So there's just some speculation, just me throwing out there, just ideas. But, so now Steppenwolf has uh, to battle the, mo- the, the modern gods. Yeah, like that is like, are they the the modern gods, or are they like the like she said, the new age of heroes? And and like, Batman, after you were the bomb and phantoms. <laughs> that's that's the line I want to hear. Like, yo, you're the bomb and phantoms. Okay. <laughs> You've probably talked about this before, but I'm just going to have to get your opinion on this show with you. Hmm. What did you think about last week's Arrow when they dropped the line about Bruce Wayne? Uh, I don't know. Are they are they itching for a crossover with Gotham? Are they trying to get more? Is that is that them trying to uh, open that door so maybe they can get uh, other, maybe if not Batman, other Gotham City characters? So 
Fat Woman, perhaps? I'll be okay with that because we've gotten Bloodhaven. Mm-hmm. We've gotten the Bruce Wayne Gotham reference in Arrow. And then, of course, we had Clark's friend in Gotham referenced on Supergirl. But Supergirl is on a different Earth. Right. So are there- and they've never, like, it's, it's weird because we know that there's not, like, a Cisco or a Barry on her Earth. Like, her Earth is so far out that mm-hmm. it doesn't have, like, doppelgangers. So it kind of makes me, like, curious, like, um, what that means for the multiverse. So, just a quick thought. Hmm. Well, good listeners, what did you think of this week's, uh, you know, send us an email at Capes and Lunatics. Remember all the good stuff that Phil said during the Adventures of Obi and the welcome home party that we threw. And find us at Krypton Report Pod at gmail.com on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. That's probably the one I'm worst at keeping up with is Instagram. Um, you know, Facebook is really where I do more stuff than anything. And then some Twitter uh, just because I forget. And uh, yeah, just remember, look up in the sky. And remember, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, please leave us a review to help us get better. If you're an Amazon shopper, just remember you can go to southgatemediagroup.com. There's a portal log into Amazon, and you'll shop into your account just regular, but it also helps keep all the podcasts on and helps keep Southgate running. Remember, look up in the sky.